guys, so this is the last seven episodes of Suchuita. But I'm going to do one more video on Suchuita, which will feature just the appearances of his uh, six other brothers in Suchuita. I've always wanted, I've intentionally left out a lot of things because I wanted to do a specific, a separate episodes on the appearances of his brothers. Okay, if you ended up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe and hit that notification button and share the video if you can. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media account, on the social media accounts that you see on your screen right now, especially on X formerly Twitter, um, and also my Patreon. All right, on to the video. When the world needs you less, what will you live for? Count on sugar to inspire people to think about the inevitability of things we conveniently often ignore. BTS has shared so many times just how much they feared crashing. Yongwa shared the same feeling. I just realized that while not all of us are flying high as they are, we all have or had our prime, whether it's our prime in our career or age or relationship. What happens now when everything goes away? What happens to us when our jobs don't need us anymore? Or when we grow old? Or the people that we spend time with leave us? What are we going to live for? Yongwa, Shuga and his other guests actually provided some tips. And it's interesting that they all have this in common to say. Just try to do what you love doing for as long as you can. And have fun doing it because it's really all you can do. CM Blue is still popular, for sure, but they are past their prime. It doesn't stop the band though from making music and performing. And Suga said that he plans on doing the same thing. He'll just continue making music, even if it means playing before 200 as opposed to 20,000. So what about you? Have you found something to do when you pass your prime? What kind of life do you want to live when the world around you doesn't need you anymore? Who are you going to be without the hustle of your daily life? What separates the professionals from the amateurs is the ability to summon their talents at will. What could transition your passion to an actual successful career is your ability to summon your talents at will. Because while it sounds so romantic to make a living only from the art that you like doing and only doing it when you feel like doing it, those two things almost never happen at the same time. At the end of the day, making a living means you need to sell people something they want to buy. What you have isn't always perfectly something that they want to pay for. So that means adjustments, compromises, and meeting commercial standards. This is what El Capitan demonstrated to Suga, his ability to get things done, despite initial doubts and regardless of whose vision it is. That's what you need. Someone who will get things done at the level you expect not only when they feel like getting it done, but when it needs to be done. So how about you? What talent or skill do you have that you can summon at will? Live life twice. Art allows you to live life twice. It is the ultimate escape. A world where you can explore different options options that real life won't allow you that's why it's so addicting you get to do everything you want to do without giving up the life that you have right now and i hope that this is what art becomes to many a second life i hope that people who are struggling with the life they have or frustrated at the things happening to them will find comfort in creating art as a way to cope of course while they take concrete actions to make their actual life better superficial measures of what a good artist is. I thought that the fascination over singers singing high notes only exist in the Philippines. I was surprised that even in Korea, unless a singer can hit the high notes, they aren't considered good. Worse, some singers actually just scream and then people call it singing. But this is a reflection of a bigger issue in arts and entertainment. People hype up one aspect of a performance so much that everything else is ignored. Anyone who grinds is considered a good dancer. Anyone with great facial expression while performing has great stage presence. Anyone who can rap rhymes written by someone else is already considered a rapper. Any song released is a cultural reset. The standard is so freaking low because the audience hypes up the minimum and then blame everyone else for the trash that's making millions of dollars. 
unless the voice of fair critics get heard, unless fans support those who actually do more than just grind and scream and look at the camera fiercely, pop won't evolve. Remember that entertainment companies will feed the audience what will make them money. If you want quality art, start supporting quality artists. Earn the right not to take bullshit. Ayu started out when she was 18. Like many idols, she was given the songs to sing, told what clothes to wear, and trained to act the way an idol is supposed to act. She has since taken control of her creatives and her career. Two decades of consistent success and consistent elevation of her art actually just prove her genius. She has earned the right not to take bullshit. And yet, people still sometimes think she is the same teen from 20 years ago who has no clue what she is doing. She had to change her demeanor, like lowering her voice when in a meeting or talking to somebody, just to establish her authority. Yes, we need to work hard enough to get us to a place where we don't need to take bullshit anymore. But not everyone will recognize that. We may need to reinforce it with our own conduct. But it still starts with substance. Bullshit won't go away. We just need to earn the right not to deal with it and learn how to reinforce our position amongst naive people. But what about you? Have you ever encountered people ignoring your authority or treating you like a child who has no clue what you're doing? And what did you do? Let us know. Maybe your tricks and tips may help other people. Labels and divisions are created to protect the insecure. Actors are held at a higher standard than musicians in Korea. That's why the win of 2PM's Junho in Bexing Awards for Best Actor was actually monumental. The divide is now a little blurred, but it was actually Um Jung-wha that laid the foundation of the bridge by constantly crossing over between two industries, delivering quality performances on both ends. What chung did for acting and singing, Suga, along with RM and J-Hope, did for rappers and idol rappers. They were castigated and maligned for becoming idols after spending years in the underground hip-hop scene. When RM started collaborating with respected hip-hop acts in the U.S., he started building the name of Korean hip-hop artists in the West. When August D, also known as Suga, hit the number one on Billboard's top rap album for D-Day and was formally acknowledged as the first rapper to hit a 3 million gross revenue for an arena concert in the U.S. It formally opened the door for other Korean rappers in the mainstream. And when J-Hope collaborated with one of the most influential figures in hip-hop, J. Cole, the link was actually cemented. Yes, this is important because hip-hop as a culture started in the African community in the U.S., specifically in New York, with influences from Jamaica and Mexico, and that is according to hip-hop historian Marcus Reeves. Despite the origin of hip-hop welcoming RM, Suga, and J-Hope, many K-hip-hop fans and rappers still refuse to acknowledge Suga, RM, and J-Hope as legitimate K-rappers. Not that it matters at this point. It only goes to show the length people will go to just to protect their own insecurities. If there is anything we have learned from rappers like J. Cole, Snoop Dogg, Erika Badu, and others is that labels aren't important. It's all about the quality of your work and how much of the spirit of hip-hop you really put into your work. And the harsh truth is that if we talk substance and real spirit of hip-hop, there are very few that can hold a candle against Suga, RM, and J-Hope. Technical greatness alone is not enough in art, but neither is emotions alone. From Adam Lambert of American Idol to Chanel of Are You Next, there is no lack of controversial eliminations in talent shows across the world. It's frustrating. I have to be honest, when the most talented don't end up winning. And yes, it is very unfair. But Ayu and Suga explained it well, and the gist is that it isn't all about talent. There are great singers, those who have raw pipes, and they have proper techniques. And then there are those who are oozing with writs, but average at best in talent. Art was never meant to be an exact science, but it's not a creative anarchy either. You need both substance and form, talent and emotion. 
find someone who can have the balance in both and you have yourself a superstar. But I'm curious of all the talent shows you've ever watched. Who is the contestant that got eliminated and you felt very, very frustrated about? Haunted by the shadow of your success. After Thriller, Michael Jackson released other great songs and albums and each one was compared to the success of Thriller, both in numbers and impact. The Beatles members, after they went their separate ways, kept on getting compared to their own band. It's the curse of getting to the top. There is nowhere else to go but down, and Suga mentioned this several times. That's what BTS felt when they first started getting international recognition. They have gotten to the top, and yet more than ever, they couldn't afford to make a mistake or even play it safe. They had to keep on topping their previous success or be dubbed a failure, which is crazy considering they have literally gone farther than anyone else. But people have a way of turning your own victories into your own monsters. And the only way to be safe from them is to learn how to live with that monster or be a bigger monster that no one else can challenge you. Guess which option BTS chose. Be easy to work with. While talent and wits are important, no one will hire you if you are an a-hole. People like working with people like Ayu and Shaga because they don't just do things according to their own preferences. They also make sure that they deliver what other people expect of them. Others call it selling out. I think it's just plain decency. But it's not just the end product. It's also the process. Sometimes, there is just too much focus on how things are supposed to be convenient for an individual that we forget there are other people whose conveniences are just as important as ours. IU said that bluntly. She tries to deliver the kind of work that will satisfy the other person, not just herself. She gets it done, and she makes it easy for everyone. That's how you make a collaboration work. Kindness of kings can shape more kind kings. The more successful you become, the kinder you should become. Being nice is a bonus. Jung Young Hwa, however, is both. In the sea of egos and evil in K-pop, Young Hwa was an angel. Based on the story of their first encounter, Young Hwa seemed to have started a simple conversation with BTS. But when you are invisible in a kingdom, a casual hello from a king can feel like a warm hug. It's important to note that CN Blue was on top of the world at that time. Yongwa didn't have to strike a conversation and he didn't have to say hello. He didn't have to pay attention to BTS. He could have done what other older groups did, ignore BTS or scare them. And yet, not only did he say hello to BTS, it was also him that made the first move. But Suga didn't disappoint. Yongwa himself made sure that people know how Suga has reciprocated his welcome by continuously reaching out to him even when BTS was too busy to even take a rest. He found time to connect with Yongwa. And we know that Suga has vowed to be a better senior artist to the younger generation. The kindness of a king can shape even more kind kings. Art of Solitude versus Art of Symbiosis Acting and music have always been connected, but also distinct in my eyes. But I never really thought about how different they really are in how they communicate their emotions with the audience. An actor, specifically movie or TV actors, rely a lot on their own interpretation of a script when they act. They build their character and interpret their role in the story on their own. They don't really get the response of the audience until their movie or TV show is released. A singer, at least those performing live, is directly interacting with the audience so they can respond to the audience and feed off the energy of the audience. I'm just wondering, one thrives in solitude and the other in symbiosis. Where do you think you'll thrive in more? They need to try and they need to fail. We can't always have what we want. We can't always have what we deserve. Yi Jong, also known as El Capitan, is a darn good vocalist, but physical limitations have prevented him from continuing his career. I think Suga knew it, but Yi Jong knew it as well, but he had to try. 
he had to fail on his own because he needed some closure. What was notable was how Sugar offered support through it all, offering to pay for his medical bills to get his voice fixed. I'm wondering if that ever happened to you. Have you ever had someone in your life who wanted something you knew he or she won't be able to get, but all you can do was watch them fail and be there for them after? Or maybe it was you who have been in that situation. Have you ever wanted something so much you just had to try even though you knew you were going to fail? I would love to hear your story. I think the, my favorite part in this last seven episodes is seeing the different dynamics that he has with his different friends like Ayu, He Song Kyung, El Capitan, and of course Jungkook made a reappearance. We're so used to his dynamics with BTS that seeing him with his other friends is kind of refreshing. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I'm not really interested in their personal lives. Yeah, I've always been a fan of their music. But it, one aspect of their personal life that I'm interested in is their friendship with within the group and with other people. I will never intrude. But when they sort of introduce that and talk about that, it piques my interest. So it was refreshing just to see his different dynamics. And I hope that there will be a season two. I don't know if he will be able to manage that given how busy they're going to be when they come back. But I hope that if time permits and if he still wants it, I hope that he can do a season, season two. All right. I hope you enjoy that series. We'll have one more just on BTS. So please uh, wait for that. If you enjoyed this video and the other parts of this series, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe and hit that notification button if you haven't already. And share the video if you can because that's really helping my channel. Also, if you have any requests, violent reactions, no violent reactions, just reactions, feedback or whatever, please feel to leave a comment. You can say whatever that you want to say, just do it respectfully. And you can also communicate with me directly on any of the social media links that you see on your screen right now, especially on Twitter, formerly. Uh, sorry, X, formerly Twitter, and on Patreon as well. Thank you!